Back, we'll have the opening kickoff between the Aggies from New Mexico State and the Aggies from Utah State. That's next on KMYU, my Utah TV. Event Center and Luxury Apartment Homes. Salt Lake Express from your door to Salt Lake City Airport 12 times a day. GNC, live well. And buy Cash Valley Oxygen, serving Cash Valley for over 35 years. Welcome back inside Rodney Stadium. Kickoff moments away between New Mexico State and Utah State. The final time these teams will be meeting in the WAC as Utah State will be in the Mountain West next year and of course New Mexico State they'll be independent but they're hoping to get into a conference in 2014 beat the third member of our crew Brooks Hansen hey thanks guys first we'd like to give a warm welcome to our friends in New Mexico joining us with Aggie Vision today's a big matchup you got the Aggies versus Aggies and talking with Dwayne Walker he's saying you know him and Gary both took the head coaching jobs of these both programs at the same time he says they're at another level right now they'd like to get to that level and for Gary he'd really like to see his young team he's got young defensive players like Fackrell and Seafeld people like that that we've seen all year he'd like to see them step up and not hit the wall that a lot of young kids can do so we'll be down here we'll bring you lots of action we got some special guests at halftime today guys but have a good call upstairs, guys. Back to you. Very good. Thank you, Brooks. So New Mexico State, they won the toss. They elected to the first. So they're going to kick off the ever-dangerous Chuck Jacobs back deep to return for the Utah State Aggies coming off that nice performance last week against San Jose State. Kevin, they scored on their first four possessions. It was 28-3. to So if they can get up to another good start here, votes very well for the Aggies. Really one of the keys on both sides. New Mexico State has not played well early in ball games. So a key on both sides, who can get the fastest start here this afternoon may have certain, ultimately the upper hand. Maxwell Johnson, a transfer from Oregon State, kicks things off, bobbled at the one-yard line, picked up, slipping down, now room to go here off the 20, at the 23-yard line. And I'm really curious, with Utah State now a, a chance to achieve bowl eligibility here today, the coaches have said they have been very focused all season long, but will they really have that mental focus at the beginning of this ball game? Chucky Keaton, a terrific quarterback for Utah State, 6'1", 200 pounds, just a sophomore. Last week, 26 of 35, 273 yards and three touchdowns. Very good decision maker. Coach Anderson liked what he did a week ago in terms of when to throw the ball, when to tuck and run. We'll start with a pass. Here's Kerwin Williams coming off a sensational performance. Explosive play to start the game to the 30. They're not going to catch him. Touchdown, Utah State Aggies. Kerwin Williams goes the distance. How about that for a start? Holy smokes. A little screen, a little flare with blockers out in front. Kerwin Williams looks like he's going to get caught, but nobody catches him, ever catches him. You talk to the offensive coordinator for Utah State. I don't care about time of possession. I don't care about lengthy drives. All I care about is scoring a 76-yard catch and run by Kerwin Williams. It just doesn't look, look like he's running that fast, but as we saw last week on the 86-yard touchdown run against San Jose State, nobody ever seems to catch him. Nick what Diaz. a start for the Utah State Aggies here in Logan. Nick Diaz will do the uh, kicking duties here this afternoon for Utah State. Been a bit of an issue as we have another look at the Kerwin Williams catch and run covering 76 yards for the senior. Yeah, you said it. Uh, you know, Matt Wells told me earlier in the week, you know, they only had 59 plays against San Jose State last week. New Mexico, or, uh, San Jose State ran 90 plus. He said, I don't really care time of possession. I don't care about long sustained drives. I just want to score. And if we can get these big chunk plays like that one right there, we will certainly take it. And Utah State off to a blistering start. Hard to start any better than that in terms of Utah State. That was kind of a big question mark. Is it possible they could overlook New Mexico State just focusing on New Mexico State's record? Playing through a lot of distractions, very difficult when you don't know where you're going to be playing. They're going to be independent next season. They're hopeful to get into a conference in 2014. That's not a guarantee. They Tough thing for uh, New Mexico State. And, and almost unheard of next year. They've got a home and home series with Idaho. Who has ever heard of that in a Division One football? Taken at the goal line, up to the 15 and to about the 20, 
one yard line and so that's where New Mexico State will begin on offense already trailing by seven points they too have a pretty good sophomore quarterback Andrew Manley number eight out of Hawaii coming off a bye so they didn't play last week put up some decent numbers against Idaho 28 for 45 309 yards two picks but the one touchdown also ran for a touchdown as well up in Moscow yeah, comes in with a 55 percent completion percentage 11 touchdowns on the season six interceptions and he's got a really good receiver right there with the football Austin Franklin Franklin was a one-time Utah State recruit and uh, I, evidently, one of the reasons why he did not come to Utah State is because he also wanted to play basketball. So we'll see if he has a chance to uh, play for Coach uh, Menzies down there at Las Cruces. See the offensive lineman. They'll get all but one of those guys back for next season. Frankly, we talked about. Also, Bateman, number 13, highly recruited by many BCS-type schools. Had some academic issues. New Mexico State, they stayed with him, and, and they're glad he's part of uh, the Southern Aggies. Yeah, now a senior and one of their captains. Second down play again to Franklin off the far side. Shy of a third down. And, of course, Utah State, very good third down defense, Kevin. Really one of the keys here this afternoon for Dave Aranda and that defensive coaching staff. They want to get the third. They want to win the third down battle. Big out, perhaps his best performance as a Utah State Aggie last week. Tyler Fackrell, we already talked about him. Vigil and Dowdy, two walk-on guys. Will Davis, 17 NFL potential. McKay Brady also a standout safety for Utah State. Yeah, Willie Davis, I talked to him on the field before the game, and he was all smiles, excited for this one, hoping to get an opportunity to make a play. Third down, they'll keep it on the ground. This is something they don't do very often, speaking of New Mexico State. And it looks like they do have a first down. So nice momentum boost here for New Mexico State trailing. They didn't want to give the ball back to Utah State, able to pick up a first down. And they've had some injuries also in the backfield. Tiger Powell's been out with a hurt shoulder. Game time decision. Here this afternoon, and that was Jeremy Morrison picking up the first down. And Utah State the, again, the, the key for them: third down, get their opponent off the field. Last week, seven drives of ten plays or more for San Jose State. Utah State defense, Utah State defense just couldn't get the Spartans off the field. Well, Davis misses a tackle. I think this is Franklin again. So already three targets for Franklin. There is a Dwayne Walker, 10 and 34 in his fourth year. Actually was a member of the Utah State coaching staff back in 1993. It was his first time ever as an FBS coach. Came out of a junior college. Says that was a blast. I think they, they started out one and five, and then they won six in a row. Beat Ball State in the Vegas Bowl. Says that was a fantastic time in my life. And then most recently before Las Cruces, he was at UCLA. So a great coaching resume for Coach Walker. But you saw how elusive Franklin is. The fake it. Pass is caught. Another first down here for New Mexico State. On the far side. It's Morrison again, the junior out of... As we have a look at uh, Coach Anderson, fourth year, 20 and 24. He has done a marvelous job at Utah State. He certainly has, and uh, talked to him a little bit before the game. And coaches in games like this where it appears that it might be a little bit lopsided, maybe one-sided, he was nervous, as were many of his assistants. A little bit of paranoia, healthy paranoia, I would say. And a fake it. Here is Morrison again up the middle. Chunks of yardage now here for New Mexico State. It's an offense that averages 24 points a game. 361 total offense, but only 85 yards on the ground. They average 2.8 yards a carry. So this is good to see for New Mexico State. Great blocking up front. They've been running that fly sweep action with Franklin, spreading the Utah State defense out, and then have had a couple of nice plays, a little play action to Morrison, and now the gap play on the read. Here comes the fly sweep again. There's a gain of 12 yards. Morrison, nice catch. Good tackle on the far side. Gain of just a couple as McMullen, I believe, came up with that stop for Utah State. And that'll be one of the keys in open space. 
being able to make tackles. A week ago, 12 missed tackles against San Jose State, and the week before, 20 missed tackles at BYU really plagued this Utah State defense, a defense that has been really, really stout all year long, giving up only 14.9 points a game. It's been since 1983 that any Utah State defense has given up less than 20 points per ball game. And this group gave up 27 a week ago in a big chunk of yardage through the air, but they came up with 13 sacks also. Number one in the whack and points allowed. Deep ball, Pelly Markers down. Franklin's open for a New Mexico State touchdown. But I think it may be coming back, Michael. I think you may have a holding penalty here on the New Mexico State Aggies. But a great move. Chop, number 70. 15 yard penalty. Even bigger, a 15 yard penalty. Franklin with a little cut to the inside and then back to the outside. Double move, pump by Manley. Beautiful ball. He beat Willie Davis, got to the end zone, but negated by the chop block penalty. Oh, that hurts. And this is one of the challenges that New Mexico State has faced all season long. They hurt themselves on these kind of plays where they've got big momentum opportunities, and then they have something like that that negates the big play and, and really hurts their momentum. And a chance to tie the game on that 33-yard touchdown throw and catch. Instead, it's going to be a second and 22 really like the play calling in this series though for New Mexico State. A lot of flag sweep action. New Mexico State with two new coordinators, 17 different starters from the season ago. So timeout going to be called by Utah State. 10-13 left. Utah State leading New Mexico State 7-0, but New Mexico State on a drive. Back after this. New Mexico State. Let's get to our automatic car credit keys of the game. Yeah, for New Mexico State, they need the big plays in the passing game. And we saw that right there to Franklin. They also needed need to force an early turnover. And for Utah State, they want to pound the ground and protect the football. And they love those big chunk plays, like they got on their opening play of the ball game. And then the other key for the Utah State defense, get off the field on third down and give your offense additional opportunities to score. Mexico State already converting on a third down via the run game. There's a second and 22. Is it intercepted? It is. Oh, I think uh, Are they gonna Coleman may have come back and stole it away from Lawson. Not the official was pointing that Lawson came up with it. Tie goes to the runner, they say. So the reception, or was it a catch? They did call it a catch by yeah. Coleman. Lawson jumped the route, got in front of Coleman, had his hands on the football, and this is something that defensive coordinator Dave Aranda has talked about all season long. Look at that, Ooh. Lawson in front, and then taken away by Bateman. Oh, um, this one may be reviewed. This this has the the feel of a Seattle Seahawk Green Bay Packer <laughs> reviewable play right there. But they're going to get the playoff here and do third and thirteen. Manley steps up, fires, incomplete. Lawson comes back with a big hit on Franklin to jar the ball loose. So he doesn't get the pick, but he gets the hit. And now a chance to get off the field. And credit that young man for coming back and staying in the game and making a play after what he thought was an interception on the previous play. Lawson last week, eight tackles. He had two sacks. Evan Lawson did last week against the Spartans. I think they, they did get the review before that play got off. I think that's what the official just told us. Before this final play just got off, they were going to review the interception or catch by Coleman or the interception. It looked like Coleman's hand came off the football, which means Lawson was the first one to have possession. So this is going to be an interesting call. So Austin Franklin got hit for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> and he's coming back to the White Hat saying, hey, why didn't you tell me that before I just got drilled by Lawson? There you see Lawson jumping in front. He's got his arms around the football, going to the ground with Coleman. Watch Coleman's right arm come off the ball right here. Right there. Off the ball and then back on the ball. And then the... I don't know that Coleman ever had complete possession of that football. But it was ruled a catch on the field, so that's going to be the key here. Is it indisputable evidence to say no catch or interception for Utah State, or do they keep it as a completion for New Mexico State? If it is a completion, New Mexico State has another opportunity on third and 13. What do you think? Just barely getting that challenge. The, the simultaneous possession is very curious. As you mentioned, since it was ruled a catch by the offensive player, 
I don't know if there's enough there to overturn it, but clearly Lawson got it first, had possession going to the ground. Then when he was on the ground, I thought the ball was somewhat whipped away. And, and like Coleman, but uh, and one of the keys bang, bang play. You, you see, you see Coleman's hand kind of come off the football. It's a quick review. Ooh, they get the, the possession, plus they get third down over again with Utah State and stopped them. And I'm not sure. Curious. I'm not sure about then additionally getting the challenge call in time. I didn't hear a whistle before the play was run. And you're right, Franklin came back and said, hey, sir, can you do that a little quicker? That hurt. Now he was drilled by Lawson, so. We'll replay third down all over again. Approaching nine minutes to play, opening quarter, Utah State scoring on their first play of the game. Manley steps up, fires down the field, incomplete. Again, I think that was Lawson who had coverage. Incomplete, looking to go to, to Bateman. And I believe that that may have been Alston that had the best chance of making a play on that game. Oh, we've been, been calling him Coleman. It's Bateman. I apologize. Okay. It's Bateman. I do too. Come on, Bateman, who was, you know, recruited by BCS programs. Kind of talked about that. Had some academic issues, but uh, one of the uh, better receivers for this New Mexico State team. Cameron Webb back deep. It will be a touchback, so the ball will come out to the 20 yard line. So Utah State again able to hold on third down. And when you come back, it'll be Utah State ball at the 20. 7 0, 8 44 left. Seventh meeting all time between New Mexico State and Utah State. The USU Aggies lead the overall series 29 to 7. And at one point, Kevin, they won 19 consecutive games from 1968 to 1998, including last year's game in Las Cruces 24 21. Last time Mexico State won was back in 09 as Keaton is in trouble, throws it away. But they certainly have the Utah State coaching staff attention. Last year, a close game, Utah State scored with, with under 40 seconds to go in that ball game to win. They've all been within five with Coach Anderson and Coach Walker. And so they certainly have the Aggie staff and players' attention. And, and Utah State staff is not letting these kids get too far ahead of themselves. Yes, they may, may become bowl eligible here today, but that doesn't guarantee them anything. They really need to win the WAC championship in order to, to secure a bowl opportunity. Telvey goes in motion to the far side. He's going to give it to Williams. Bottled up at the 20, nothing doing. So now third and 10 coming up for Utah State. And I'm curious to see center Tyler Larson, how well he can perform here today. He's, he's battling a little bit of a back injury. He's the, the leader on that offensive line. Had a chance to talk to him earlier in the week. Excited about the progress of this Utah State program. Now, timeout called by New Mexico State. Looks like Trayshawn Nixon, the linebacker, one of the uh, players we featured for New Mexico State. Hurt shoulder. Well, KMYU is the television home for the Utah State Aggies. Our next telecast will be Saturday, November 3rd, when Texas State comes to town. Our coverage begins at 1 p.m. Watch the Utah State Aggies on KMYU by Utah TV. You see the Bobcats. That'd be an interesting ball game. Last week, a 38-7 winner over Idaho. Former FCS program until this season. So be Curious to see how they fare here in Logan. Now, big, big play here for that New Mexico State defense. Had a good drive, over six minutes on their opening offensive drive after giving up the big play to Kerwin Williams to start the game. Going to send Matt Austin in motion. Dump it down to Williams. Williams has a first down. Tiptoes his way to the 31 yard line. So Kerwin Williams, a very good beginning and a big long 76 yard touchdown catch and now moves the sticks for Utah State. This is one of the staples, becoming one of the staples of this Matt Wells, the offensive coordinator for Utah State, led offense. Excellent job, patience by Keaton. 
Blockers look at that out from Markosian, Wimpy, Larson, and then let your guy that has the speed and the moves make a play and get you the first down. Heaton again. Here comes pressure. And to avoid it, rolls to the far side and throws it away. Yeah, Deontay Savage, probably their best overall defensive lineman coming in. But Chucky able to sidestep him and get rid of the ball. There's Savage, 6'2", 250 senior out of Portland, Oregon. Set out all of last season, but uh, they're expecting big things from him. And that is one of the things that Keaton can do for you. Get you out of bad plays and into good plays with his feet. What he is doing, though, is becoming a much better pocket passer. Is improving week by week in that category. Two for 273 yards last week. Williams taking his way up to the 35 yard line. Third down coming up for Utah State. So thus far in the running game, New Mexico State has been very strong, and Utah State's offensive players and staff told us that that front seven was very stout. Excellent up front, linebacking core, run to the football. They play with a lot of passion and emotion. It's really the secondary where Utah State thinks they have the advantage. Third and eight. Joe Hill goes in motion. Catch made. Bob a little bit by Jacobs, but good for a first down into New Mexico State territory at the 48 yard line. Nice job converting on third down. Speaking of Utah State, coming in 42% on third down conversions. And Jacobs with his first catch here today. Good call, Michael. Watch right here. Bobble dead. Oh boy, I almost let that go through. And then New Mexico State stripping at it at the end, trying to pull that ball out. And that's been one of the, the challenges for this Utah State offense. They put too many balls on the carpet. Gain of 17 yards and looking for deeper things here. And it's caught again by Jacobs. He'll walk into the end zone for another Utah State touchdown. 49 yard pass and catch. Keaton to Jacobs again. Fifth time this season the two have hooked up. That was Harris. Man to man coverage just fell down. Thrown a little bit short. Or was that Nixon trying to come back and make a play? And Jacobs just got the inside position. Almost sort of boxed him out as basketball play. Diaz with the point after. So it's the big plays coming from Utah State's offense. First it was Williams. Now it's Jacobs. Utah State leading New Mexico State 14 0. 626 left in the first quarter. To defend their home court with 18 regular season home games in the spectrum. Season ticket packages are available now through the USU ticket office. Order online at utahstateaggies.com or over the phone by calling 1 888 U State 1 or in person at the Spectrum ticket office. Don't miss one of the best college basketball atmospheres in the nation. Utah State basketball, believe it. Matt Wells, Utah State Offensive Coordinator. True to his word, doesn't really care about time of possession and sustained drives. We'll take big chunks. And this time a big chunk down the field to Chuck Jacobs. He got the inside position on Treshawn Nixon. Keaton so far, four of six, 153 yards and two touchdowns. Off to another nice start. Wow. And you know he's going to surpass, most likely surpass the 2,000 yard mark on the season here this afternoon. Who would have guessed that this young man who came in a year ago as a running quarterback is turning into a fine passing quarterback for the Utah State Aggies? Entered with a kickoff, and this is Franklin doesn't reach the 15 yard line. So Utah State special teams doing a nice job affecting this return coverage. One more look at the touchdown catch. And really a little bit underthrown. And as Nixon got tied up a little bit with Jacobs, Jacobs makes the catch and says, okay, I'm going to get hit here. I saw Nixon on the ground and just sort of waltzed into the end zone. Big play for the Aggie offense. And now can New Mexico State, who has struggled mightily out of the gate, doing so again here today, can they respond? We'll see what sort of resolve these young men have for New Mexico State. I've been full on the coverage with a wide pass. This is, you know, for New Mexico State, this is what you need to do. You got to win on first down. That's a, a nice pickup by Bateman, the senior out of Los Angeles, California. And remember, on their opening drive, they had the touchdown. 
to Franklin that got called back because of the chop block. Otherwise, this is a very different looking ball game right now. Bateman against UTEP, seven catches, 115 yards and a touchdown. Deflected and incomplete. It was bobble and drop at the 20. Utah State again with good pressure. Tavares McMillan with a, uh, another nice play for this Utah State defense. Paris Scoggins, the tight end, the intended receiver, had sort of a combo route on the outside with Franklin going down the sideline, ball a little bit behind. It was, but you got to make that catch. Scoggins had his hands on it. McMillan took his legs out, and now another third down. Critical third down opportunity for the New Mexico State Aggies right here. Cannot afford to give it back to this potent Aggie offense. Back will have the coverage. And no flag here as it looked like it was, oh, there is a flag in the backfield. Thought we might get one here on also the corner, but instead look in New Mexico State's backfield. And I think it's going to go against New Mexico State. Number 70 offense, hands to the face. The defense player does have to leave the game. It was Connor Williams that coming on the pressure. Declined. The offensive lineman, big number 70, Andy Cunningham, a 6'4", 300-pounder out of Frisco, Texas, kind of got his hands up into the face mask of Williams. Dangerous play. That ball was tipped by Alston up in the air. Lawson had a chance to get it. There you see the hands right in the middle. Oh, I'm sorry. That was against B.J. Larson. Larson's helmet came off. And there you see the tip ball. Utah State gets off the field on a third down. Gavin Webb. Nice tackle. Brought down quickly. And so Utah State again come out after back-to-back -back possessions with touchdowns. Looking for another one here. Remember they started the San Jose State game with four consecutive touchdowns. Their, their problem has not been first quarter or second quarter. We'll talk maybe a little bit more about that as we get into the second half. But the Utah State offense has been very strong in the opening half. I asked Coach Matt Wells, do you script? And he said, yeah, sometimes, but we just go by where we are and down a distance and field position. There's Hill off the edge. Tripped up, lost the ball out of bounds, and Hill had a terrific game against Southern Utah in the uh, week one matchup. Three touchdowns, the Cash Valley Bank uh, starting lineup. Larson, a little bit banged up. Matt Austin is the leader of the receiving group. He's got it here to catch this afternoon. But they have been hurt a little bit by Oscar Lina Sanchez, his injury. They're hopeful to get him back next season. They have to go through a bunch of, you know, compliance issues. So they've kind of switched Eric Schultz from right guard to right tackle. And they've elevated Kyle Wimpy now from a backup to a, a starter on that right side. Third and four now coming up for Utah State. And they're in the bottom of the formation. Keaton. Lobs one up for Austin, incomplete. So New Mexico State able to hold on third down. Coach Walker says, we've got no Michael Jordans or Kobe Bryants on this defensive front four. The Savage is a good one. Trayshawn Nixon, they get him back next season. They believe he's going to be a very good college linebacker. And the, the secondary, we've seen four give up a touchdown as he lost his footing deep. But uh, that's an area of emphasis for Coach Walker. They've sent three guys to the NFL from the secondary under his watch. And really on that third down play, it was Jeremy Harris, the cornerback who bottled up Matt Austin, wanted to run the slant route and wasn't there. Great play by Jeremy Harris and New Mexico State, able to get Utah State off the field. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and Utah State Volleyball Team wants to help out by raising money for breast cancer services provided by Logan Regional Hospital Foundation. The next home volleyball match is coming up Thursday, October 25th at 7 p.m. in the D. Glenn Smith Spectrum. Help USU Volleyball dig for a cure all October matches. Start on the ground. 
Morrison again. So he has become the guy since the injury to Tiger Powell, the junior from Lake City, Florida, as Dowdy makes the stop. And if Dowdy doesn't get him there, Morrison's down the sideline. Really impressed by the scheme by this New Mexico State offense. Can they finish and can they eliminate the penalties that really hurt them, especially on that opening drive? But their scheme has been very solid. A lot of fly sweep action, good mix of run and pass, and Morrison's had a couple of good gainers here in the first quarter. Utah State's defense, they've only given up three points the entire first quarter, the entire season. Catch made by Trevor Wolf. 6'5", 232. All the way to midfield. How about that effort play? From Waverly, Ohio, Trevor Walls refused to go down. Didn't have a catch against Idaho. That's only his fourth catch of the season. Does nice. have a touchdown, though, this year. A nice. gain of 29 yards. Nice action. Again, the fly sweep fake to Franklin coming across the formation. Had Morrison the back out in the backfield. And then the big guy, Walls, the tight end, coming over the middle. Oh, and boy, Utah State just about got the strip there at the end. But he dragged three of them, four of them, for another eight to ten yards. Austin ripping at that ball, another big ball. The Franklin is open again. Able to get past Will Davis. Incomplete, however. They've had some opportunities. You mentioned the one got called back because of a touchdown, but you can't get that much more open than with... Austin Franklin was against Willie Davis. Just a simple post pattern. You can see the speed. And the Utah State coaches and players all talked about Franklin. He's the guy that they've got to bottle up. Trayvon Colwell, he's wildcat guy, yet to throw a pass this season. Does have five carries for 26 yards. Option play into Utah State territory. Gave the ball to Jeremy Morrison, the junior out of California, Franklin Sutera with the stop. Nice job defending the option. And thus far, the yeah, offensive lineman there coming up a little bit gimpy for New Mexico State, but Sutera using the boundary and the sideline as his friend had a pretty good angle there on the option pitch. Now big third and eight. Early Utah State a week ago, 13 sacks, a school record, and not by just a little bit. Their previous school record was eight, 13 sacks. But thus far, scheme and protection have been solid for New Mexico State. Really no pressure on Manley here in the first quarter. New Mexico State just one of three on third down. And they'll call their second timeout here of the quarter. There's still 231 left. But I mean, you got to make sure you got the right play. You want to convert and extend the drive. And this is the second time they've been in Utah State territory. That is an interesting call to bring in Colwell on the Wildcat there. Manley's been really effective in the play-action game. Really had an opportunity there with, with uh, Franklin on the post route. Just missed him, just overthrew it. And he had separation against Will Davis. Davis told me before the game that this, I feel like this is the game that I might get that elusive interception. And we saw his eyes back in the backfield on the pump and go route that Franklin had for the touchdown. Seven yards to go. Third and seven from the 46. Manley steps up. Going to try to run for it, and he's going to be a yard short. Got to believe that New Mexico State's going to want to go for this. At fourth and a yard. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that Utah State offense has been potent and powerful. And this time, I think it was Lasique that had him by the jersey. And they got him to the turf short of the first down. But you're right, fourth and a yard. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that little fly sweep action maybe with a slip out to the backfield to Morrison. They've had success with that play here. Not sure that your, your ground game, you don't, I don't know if you have the confidence in that ground game to get a yard when you really need it. New Mexico State, 45% on fourth down conversions. And it looks like they're going to get it as Manley, 6'3", 225, decent size for the sophomore. Sneaks over, which I, I think is going to be good enough for a first down, but we haven't seen a signal yet from our officials. Good surge by that New Mexico State offensive line, but this is close. I think maybe by the nose of the football, they're going to have this first down. I think they're going to have to measure it, though, but an excellent surge 
by that New Mexico State offensive front. Wallace and Cunningham, Izioke, Kirsten, Dada Richards. A nice surge up front. Coach Walker about this offensive line. He's excited. They're only going to lose one of these guys. So you get the feeling that this will be a much better team next season with uh, this youth getting some experience and coming back. We'll bring out the chains. Officially measure for this. By the nose. There it is. By maybe an inch. And it keeps the drive alive. And, and again, time of possession going to be really in New Mexico State favor here, here in the first quarter, but they find themselves down 14 nothing. What it does do, though, is it starts to wear down a defense. So the, the depth that Coach Gary Anderson has talked about over and over again will play a key role here, here in this ballgame. First down for New Mexico State. Morrison off the left side. Cuts it up, absorbs a hit. All the way to the 32 yard line. Nice pickup on first down by New Mexico State. They were seeing a little bit more of Jeremy Morrison last, well, two weeks ago, I guess, the last game against Idaho. 16 carries for just 66 yards. But they are making an effort to run the football. They also brought in you know, the third string quarterback to run a little bit of Wildcat. So this is their running game. Right, absorbed that big blow by McKay Brady. Morrison, 56 carries, 263 yards coming into this ball game. You, you called it, only averaging 85 yards per contest. Defense, five yard penalty, first down. 85 yards per contest on the ground, and, and they are making an effort. They're not only making an effort, they're actually succeeding here on the ground against this stout Utah State defense. Kevin, coming in as a team, they had 514 rushing yards. Kerwin Williams by himself has outrushed this team by almost 200 yards. Remarkable. But they're, they're performing well here this afternoon and now approaching the red zone. 33 seconds left. And nobody home that time. His pressure came a little bit late by Utah State. Targeting Austin Franklin was Andrew Manley. It looked like they had sort of a comeback route. A little bit of stuff happening up front. Coach Gary Anderson not happy at all. And take out Elvis. Whoa, grabbed him by the face, Mike. There's some pushing and shoving after the play. And I saw a kick as well. And Coach Anderson's following him all the way to the bench. Does not tolerate undisciplined action by his players. It's one of the things that we've seen over and over again that this, this team responds to their head coach. And he's taking this as a teaching moment, still over there on the sideline, coaching his young man. But uh, Coach Anderson has brought a lot of things, but accountability is certainly one of them. Another run play. Jake Dowdy, the junior. Juan Diego High School product. A lot of former Juan Diego soaring eagles here on this uh, Utah State team. 3A power in the state of Utah. 55 players in all on this Utah State roster from the state of Utah. Well, that was goal number one by... Coach Gary Anderson is, we need more in-state kids. They've got 55. So that is how we come to the end of the first quarter. Utah State, they've used the big play, and they lead New Mexico State 14-0. When you come back, second quarter action from Romney Stadium.